One of the things that make the trombone unique from almost every other instrument is that uh, we have to tongue absolutely everything. Well, almost, almost everything. If we take a valved instrument such as uh, this trumpet here, or if we take uh, pretty much any other instrument that immediately springs to mind, we can do really simple scales and rely on the valves to provide most of the articulation. I tongue the first note and I let the valves do the rest. With the trombone, we don't have that flexibility. If I did the same thing, I would get this. Now, of course, that result is quite different from the result that we get from the trumpet because with the trombone, we need to articulate. We need to define each and every note ourselves because the trombone isn't going to do it for us. There are naturally some, uh, some intervals where the trombone will articulate for us. But everything else is just a gliss. And so with the trombone, more so than most other brass instruments, tonguing becomes a really key central pillar of, of the trombonist's technique. So most of us watching this video will be familiar with how we produce a note. We tongue into the mouthpiece. There are many different ways that we can approach tonguing. We can do D tongues, do tongues, we can do different sorts of sounds um, and we can create different sorts of results based on what we're after. So if I go back to that same concert F major scale, we could tongue it with, uh, with a very sharp tongue. Or we could slur it with a, a much softer do tongue. And we've got all those various degrees uh, in between those two examples. However, all trombonists and all brass musicians will have a natural limit to how fast they can tongue. Now, one of my greatest limits uh, as a trombonist and one of the really key aspects uh, that prevented me from becoming a trombonist professionally or studying this instrument further is that I have a very slow tongue. The fastest that I can single tongue is this. Now most of you will be able to go home and go da 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 faster than I can. My wife, who hasn't touched a brass instrument for several years now, can tongue faster than I can. So what do we do then if we've got sections that are faster than what we can physically tongue? Well, there is uh, a second way that we can articulate notes. Normally, we create notes with the front of our mouth. We'll go T, D, do, etc. to make notes uh, start. We can also use the back of our throats to do the same thing. So instead of going ta, we will instead go ka. Now that uh, syllable doesn't require the tongue at all, so that we can rock between the front of our mouths and the throats to alternate sounds. So we can go from ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta, ka, ta. We can go a lot faster because we're only using our tongue to create the first of those notes. So whereas somebody like me might be only able to single tongue at a slow speed, ta, 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 by using my throat, I can almost double that speed. ta ka 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 ta because I'm not relying on my tongue to create each of those syllables. My tongue creates the first, my throat creates the second. Ta, ka, ta, ka, ta. The result is uh, naturally a bit different when you put that into uh, your instrument. One of those is easier, one of those syllables is easier to create than the other. But when you're practicing this technique, it is always important to practice the weaker one as the primary point of focus. So when you start making, uh, when you start trying to make the k syllables into your instrument, it's probably going to sound a bit fluffy. 
sort of like that. But with lots of practice, you'll be able to get it up so it is almost indistinguishable from the sound that is created when you use the tongue or the front of the mouth. So double tonguing is not really double tonguing at all because you're not tonguing twice as fast. You're just providing different uh, ways to start the sound throughout the instrument. Taka instead of just ta. So double tonguing is that technique where we go taka 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 and so forth. Triple tonguing is the next iteration of that, and that is where we usually would go ta ta ka. So two normal tongues and a throat tongue ta ta ka, or the way I was taught wrongly many years ago was to go ta ka ta taka ta taka ta taka ta taka ta ta. The difference between the two is is pretty is pretty minimal, um, but there is a difference. So if I first go ta ta ka ta ta ka ta, and then go ta ka ta ta ka ta ta into my trombone, you'll hear the difference. So I tried to do them uh, reasonably slowly, but you can get the difference between the two. Both are worthwhile knowing. Um, and both exist as valid alternatives, but the one that I understand is the most uh, acceptable way in this current modern era is to go ta 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 Or the two T tongues and one, the two, the two front of your mouth tongues and the one throat tongue. Ta 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 ta. One advantage that the trombone has over other brass instruments is that uh, with other brass instruments you really have to work on the timing between your tongue and your fingers. If you tongue, uh, if you create a note that falls when your valves are only halfway down, then the sound isn't going to get produced. It's really important that you only tongue when your valves are the full way down. So there's a lot of work that goes into not necessarily the technique, but the timing of the technique. So your lips and your fingers are in perfect sync. That's not a problem that we have with the trombone because a trombone will create a sound regardless of where the slide is, whether it's halfway between our position or whether the slide has arrived at the position we are currently searching for. I remember playing a march that was entitled Jubilee. It was a quick march written by think somebody Drury, Paul Drury, I'm not, sure, not too sure about the composer's name, um, but it's got a bass solo halfway through it and the bass solos are usually the part where the trombones generally sort of forget any sort of dignity and just play as loud as they can. Um, the uh, bass solo in a march such as the Wellingtonian goes like this. <laughs> Now that is probably going to be manageable uh, single tongued, but if we get to something like the bass march in, uh, that comes from the Quick March Jubilee, this is what the euphoniums have got. Now I don't know anyone that could single tongue that. I certainly have not got a dog show of single tonguing that. If I was to single tongue it, it'd have to be at this speed. And uh, the whole band would be finished the piece and halfway through their cup of tea by the time I've gotten through that section. Now the trombone, it's true the trombone part in that particular march is slightly different. It's got uh, so it doesn't have all of those same notes, but uh, when I played that march, I was the euphonium player, so I've naturally memorized the euphonium part, not the trombone part. Um, but nonetheless, the principle is the same. We couldn't get through that section unless, well, I couldn't get through that section as a trombonist unless I had the ability to do double tonguing. If we take the variation to the Bluebells of Scotland, then that's also written so it needs to be double tongued. And then the last variation is much the same. So if you 
you're like me and you have some troubles uh, articulating particularly fast, then double tonguing, triple tonguing is uh, something that you should develop. And just to go over the principles again, we're using the front of our mouth to articulate the first in the set. A set, double tonguing's got two, triple tonguing's got three in the set. We use the front of our mouth to articulate the first one and the throat to articulate the last one. In the case of the triple tongue, when you've got the set of three, the middle one is also the front of the mouth tongue. So, ticka 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 ta for double tongue, and triple tongue, ta ticka ta ticka ta ticka ta ticka ta. Now, to soften those, you can change the t and the k syllables for d and g. So instead of ticka 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 ta, you can go daga 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 da. That'll create a softer sound like this. So you can have the same variances that you've got with single tonguing whilst also doing the double or triple technique. The differences in how strong that technique is is based on where in your mouth those sounds are being produced. The t sound is right at the very front of your lips. So if I turn sideways, the t sound is getting produced right here, right in the lips. The k uh, the sound is right at the back of the throat. We can make those sounds come closer together by instead of going t, d. D is made a little bit more back in the face and g is made a bit forwards, a, a little bit more forwards. So instead of the rocking motion between being between the t and the k at completely different ends of the mouth, the d and the g sound are made closer together. So it is sometimes quicker to go digga 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 da than what it is to go ticka 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 ta. Because the tongue, the embouchure sort of rocks between those two syllables and you've got further distance between them if you use a ta and a ka syllable as opposed to the da and the ga syllable. But anyway, that's just a little bit academic. It's all up at the end of the day to you guys getting your instrument out and playing around, doing some demos, finding out what works for you. Um, it's just unfortunate for me that I have a really slow tongue so I can't take full advantage um, of whatever talent I may or may not have to take music further. Um, but hopefully uh, you guys will have a little bit more luck than what I do uh, and will be able to utilize faster passages easier. It's all about practice. Uh, so thanks for watching.